Hi and welcome back to my channel. I'm Janetta, Polish girl living in Taiwan. This time we are visiting Puzi town near the Jai Tainan border, a place rich in history and culture. Built in 1933 during the Japanese occupation, the Puzi water tower was crucial for improving drinking water hygiene. Today, it stands as an important cultural landmark, despite being closed to the public due to structural concerns. Due to its historical and cultural significance, it was designed as a cultural asset in 2014. The Puzi Water Tower, once the tallest building in Puzi, became a landmark and a significant tourist attraction. The Shuidaoto Kuchua and Creative Settlement is the first of its kind in Jai County, centered around the historic Puzi Water Tower. This area includes several Japanese-style buildings that served as a residence for police officers and teachers during the Japanese era. When we arrived at the Japanese dormitories area in Puzi, preparations were underway for a market to celebrate the Dragon Boat Festival. The place was bustling with activity. Unlike the more famous Japanese dormitories in Jai City, these in Puzi are less known but equally fascinating. I had no idea about the vast area of Japanese buildings here. This might be because we rarely venture into Jai, or perhaps I just never explored the small towns around. In Taiwan, many tourist spots are remnants from the Japanese era, with fewer structures remaining from the Qing dynasty, due to destruction over time. I have never thought much about traveling to Japan, but I find myself drawn to these wooden buildings. They make me dream of a future home with such architectural beauty. The history of Puzi reaches back to the Dutch era as there are several records of settlements here. Before 1950, the area was governed by Tainan County. Puzi City has transformed from a modest settlement into a central hub in Jai County. During Japanese rule, it played a crucial role in the region's development. Renovated to enhance historical and cultural value, the settlement now hosts various workshops, exhibitions and interactive performances. Visitors can enjoy handmade crafts, local foods and a certain Japanese-style environment. The weather forecast predicted rain, but we were fortunate to enjoy plenty of sunshine. The noon heat was intense, reminding me of a cooler climate up north, where we now live. Despite the heat, we explored various attractions throughout the day. Several of the Japanese-era buildings are still inhabited. And if you are visiting, 
No means that boots and embroidery caught your hall. In the early days, Pudu was a bustling hub for the embroidery industry. The city's skilled artisans crafted an array of exquisite products exported across Taiwan. To preserve the rich cultural heritage, the Pudu city office has been dedicated to promoting embroidery since 2002. They established the Jiayi County Embroidery Culture Association and built a culture museum housed in the historic wooden Japanese dormitory building. The museum showcases Buddha's embroidery heyday, featuring meticulously crafted works and interactive exhibits. Through community engagement and cultural events, it has become a mass visit destination, revitalizing local heritage and promoting cultural tourism. <music> Lastly, we visited what remains of Donshi Shrine, established in 1946 during the Japanese colonial period. The shrine has been transformed into Pudu Art Park in 1987, the shrine remnants, such as the Tory Gate, were listed as Jai County Historical Buildings in 2019. The west side of the shrine is adjacent to the water source of Pudzu Waterway. After World War II, the shrine was turned into a coastal patrol camp and the shrine hall was demolished. Next, we traveled to Tainan's Hobby District and revisited Jingliao Old Street with its Qing Dynasty architectural style, wooden mill and several Japanese-era remnants nearby. But more about it in my next video. That's all for today. If you enjoy my content, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye!